Hi there, uh, it's Jeff back again with another video. Uh, we've had several requests for some videos where we walk through some exam questions, an essay question maybe, or a daily response question, and give some hints about how to build great chains of reasoning and what makes strong evaluation to get those top marks. So I've chosen an essay this time on price discrimination. You may well have covered it as part of your study of monopoly, for example. Uh, let's walk through this, this question. So assess whether a business using price discrimination might damage consumer welfare. Very topical, lots of businesses engage in price discrimination. So the key is to build connected chains of reasoning. I'd start with a definition. Price discrimination happens when a firm charges a different price to different consumers for essentially the same good or service, but not to do with the cost of production. Nice, clean definition, knowledge marks. And then consider, for example, broadband and insurance companies who often charge higher prices to renewal customers, existing customers, than, than the price paid by new buyers. So a bit of application there. Now, this is third degree price discrimination, good knowledge, made possible because renewals, people who are, for example, renewing their car insurance, uh, may have a default bias. They don't, they don't look around for a better deal, so therefore typically have a lower coefficient of elasticity of demand. Consequently, firms charge higher prices above marginal cost, extract consumer surplus, turning it into higher monopoly profit. Nice analysis there. Price above marginal cost, extracting consumer surplus, converting it into monopoly profit. We're using three concepts in one sentence. As a result, nice connective word phrase there, as a result, there is a loss of allocative efficiency and a deadweight loss of consumer welfare. And this can then cause consumers, such as older households perhaps, to experience low effective disposable incomes, which is inequitable. So people have been with the car insurance company for years, they pay a high insurance renewal premium um, and uh, there's less money for them to spend as a result. And that's inequitable, that's damaging consumer welfare. And the analysis diagram, uh, by the way, check out our video on third degree price discrimination where I go through this diagram with you step by step, every step of the way. So if this looks a little daunting, just go into the uh, YouTube channel and just type in tutor to you price discrimination in third degree and you'll get the step by step journey through this diagram. But it basically shows that renewals get charged a higher price than new buyers because of the differences in price elasticity of demand. So there's my analysis diagram. But then we need to evaluate. However, this pricing strategy has been deemed to be illegal by the Financial Conduct Authority. If indeed they've banned it from 2023, this so-called dual pricing strategy. And it's estimated it's going to save consumers around £4 billion over the next decade. That's good background knowledge. You can impress the examiners. And building the evaluation in defence of broadband companies, many of them, including BT, Sky Virgin Media, they're now thinking about or have introduced social tariffs. Now, a social tariff is when you charge a lower price to lower income families for the same good or service. So four million households on income support, universal credit, they get a cheaper deal on their broadband. Uh, and that's only made possible by using the, the, the money, the profits of price discrimination to fund a cross subsidy. Indeed, it may well be the case that the social tariff makes a loss the likes of Virgin Media or BT, um, financed essentially by the profits paid by, made by, or from people paying full price. Nice evaluation there. Second point, you need to develop two analysis points. The second way in which discrimination can damage welfare is that it's used as a tactic to reinforce monopoly power. Some examples, businesses, often airlines, banks, pharmaceutical companies routinely use second and third degree discrimination to make life hard for a new entrant. Hotels, for example, could use price discrimination to lower their prices when new entrants are looking to take market share. And indeed, the profits from price discrimination might, might be used to fund predatory pricing, which of course is illegal, but very hard to prove, which is designed to force firms out of the market, where you use uh, profits from one group of customers to uh, price at a loss to another group designed to inflict damage, commercial damage on a rival firm. As a result, in the long run, if you maintain your market power, then profit-maximising monopolies can charge a higher price than in the competition. And you know, another good example, a bit of application to make the point 
An example is the high price paid by diabetics in the USA. They pay a much, much higher price for the insulin in contrast to um, people need, who need insulin in the European Union and the UK. And there are social costs here because, of course, high insulin prices can cost lives. Valuation is a nice little phrase to use in evaluation as a counterpoint or as a counter argument. It's a nice little way of introducing uh, an evaluation paragraph. Let's see what I say here. Businesses with monopoly power can use often use profits to fund research and development, which over time can improve dynamic efficiency in markets. For example, application, the use of supernormal profits to finance innovation in life sciences and renewable energy. Uh, businesses such as AstraZeneca have committed to researching and manufacturing COVID vaccines and then pricing them at marginal cost in perpetuity. Uh, in other words, moving away from pure profit maximisation. And this has important implications for the availability of vaccines, especially in low-income countries where health services are just already stretched and people can't afford uh, to, to acquire high vo uh, big volumes of vaccines. And if pricing was marginal cost, this can achieve an allocatively efficient outcome and possible gains in consumer welfare. There we go. Uh, now, in some exam boards, you need to bring a conclusion or a final reason comment in. But all I've tried to do there is just work you through two chains of analytical reasoning, the big diagram and two paragraphs of um, evaluation. Here I am again on the video. <laughs> if you found it useful, please do press like and subscribe. Uh, and also maybe leave a comment in the comments box if you want me to take another topic and walk you through another 25 marker essay question. I'll happily do that. I'll do my best to respond to comments as they appear on the YouTube channel. Stay happy. Stay positive. See you soon.